Bonjour Florian. Bonjour Maëlle. <laughs> uh, congratulations on the sun. It is such a powerful story once again that you're telling. Tonight's The Golden Gloves and Hugh Jackman is obviously nominated for Best Actor uh, in a motion picture. Are you going to, are you going to be able to attend? No, I'm not actually because I'm, I'm supposed to go to Palm Spring uh, Festival tonight for oh. q &A, so I won't be there. And um, actually, Hugh won't attend either because he's on stage at the moment in New York, right. with the Music Man. And so right. he, he has been on stage every every night since last January. So it's yeah. like a, a huge commitment that he did. Uh, so he's not capable to to move to uh, and to travel to LA. It is, it is it's it's absolutely great and congratulations for this nomination as well. You've got such a way to put your lead actors in a very good position just in time for the award season? I mean, this is not something that, you know, I'm thinking of, you know, I'm just trying yeah. to, to find um, stories that, you know, needs and requires um, strong performances and profound actors. And this is, I think Hugh Jackman is a, an extraordinary actor and he's also an extraordinary, extraordinary human being, which is, um, relevant for some films this story the son it's about a father trying to help and to help his son going through you know depression and i really wanted not to to do a film about bad parenting but about you know this feeling of being important you know when you are in a position as father or as a mother when you do not know what to do anymore and to me that it was really important to have someone like you who you can feel that he's a good person you can feel like he is a caring father he's a loving father but sometimes love is not enough you know when you want to open doors but you don't have the right keys and so it was my intention so when i met him i really felt that but who he is as a person would you know give the character that dimension i love that you always found a way to incorporate some French little details uh, in your films. I saw that you had, a, I think it was a Rimbaud, a poem or a poster in yeah, the- poster, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it your way to feel at home on set? Yeah, I don't know. It's uh, a bit, you know, what is very, very rewarding and exciting when you are making a film is that you have to make so many decisions and some of them are about small details and some of them you know no one would notice them so it's about creating like an invisible consistency or an invisible coherence you know and mm -hmm. so, yes you use what who you are as a person you know yeah. your backstories your dreams your references mm -hmm. and it makes it even more you know yours in a way mm -hmm. um, and i'm french as you know and as you can hear so <laughs> It's sometime around there. But I like the fact that um, I'm working not in my language, that I'm trying to do something that is not French because it puts me in in slightly uncomfortable position and many good things artistically could happen because I'm uncomfortable. You know, I cannot rely on the capacity to tell everything, you know, because it's not my language. So I need to know exactly what I want people to understand. I need to be to be even more precise because you do not use language just to say what you have to say. You know, we use language to deal with conflicts, to manage people, suscept susceptibilities to, uh, I mean, it, it, it's, it's many things that you can do with your language when you are completely at ease and fluent. But when it's not your language, it's you are limited to just what you need people to understand so it's very interesting it's frustrating but it's interesting because as i said then you have to be very clear yourself about what you want to tell you have to be very clear about what you want to say what you want to show when you want when you want to shoot so in a way it's a it's it's a it's a beautiful experience i mean to me at least 
Yeah, I'm with you. As someone who always have to work in English, uh, it's obviously I'm obviously not a film director, but I, I totally relate to what you're saying. Uh, always having to speak English makes you in a, in a position where you have to be completely 100% focused on what you're saying or what you're doing. Absolutely. And also, when it comes to specifically to movies, what is interesting is that, you know, I discovered that you could almost direct a film in a language you do not understand. I mean, there are many difficulties, but you have to be connected to a place where you can feel if it's right or not, if it's if it's good or not. And it's beyond language somehow. It's like it's like an invisible human connection with the actors. And I like this as well because it's more instinctive. And it's mm. um it's I love to be in this place, I would say. It's the beauty of art. It's um uh, it's for everyone, it's an international language. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, cinema is a language in itself, you know, so it's being a language. And I, and I love to experience that. Of course, I understand English, but I mean, it could happen in another language. And I, uh, I think it's a very um, extraordinary, extraordinary thing to experience yeah. the fact that we are all connected and we are all sharing, you know, the same fears, the same difficulties. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is who we are. Especially with this topic, mental health is a universal language in a way. Yeah, I mean, it's that's also why I wanted to make an American film about it. It's that I didn't want to tell a French story or a British story or an American story. I wanted to try to do something that was more universal, if it means something, because I know that it happens everywhere. You know, it's not only Kate's and Peter's story, it's everyone's story somehow. Mm -hmm. And because there are so many pain I mean, so many people in pain everywhere and mm. some people experiencing, you know, this feeling of not knowing what to do to help someone you care for, as I said. And there are so much ignorance and so much shame and so much guilt around these topics, let's say mental health issues, that I really wanted to shoot that story for that reason, I mean, to open a conversation about it and to try to invite people to face the current situation in a way, which is that so many people are not helped with their own struggle. Uh, so it, it kind of goes with my next question, because as a director, what scene in this film did you really think, you know, when you saw it on the camera, when did you think, that's it, that's the movie I want to do, that is the story I'm telling? I mean, there are many moments like that, but it was really, I was really, you know, it was beautiful for me to be just behind the camera, attending, these actors going through these emotions because it was as if I was seeing them going really through these emotions. It was not about performing. It was not actors trying to imitate something they vaguely know. It was about them trying to be as honest as possible, be, be, meaning to explore what they have in deep down, mm. what was connected in the first place to that story. And it was they, as if they, I asked them in a way not to be a character, but to allow themselves to be themselves in front of the camera. So I think this is when, to answer your question, the truth of these emotion, this is what I was you know, trying to reach or to catch. And, and they, this is what they try to reach and to bring to the table, you know, in a very courageous way, I would say, because it was not easy. And they did that, you know, with, with really, uh, I mean, I was really grateful to them, especially Hugh Jackman and Laura Dern, you know. They, they are not only great actors, but they are also father and mothers and, you know, trying to, as honestly as possible, to explore their own difficulties, to share that with us. It's not about, you know, it's just about sharing things. That, that's exactly my, my next question as well, because I was going to say there are a few moments, not a few moments, just a, a, some scenes in particular where you really see them detach themselves from the script. And I have one in mind in particular at this moment. It's the one uh, towards the end at the hospital when the, the doctor says that the son should probably stay at the hospital. You see them, how this news just strikes them. And the one scene at the restaurant I think this scene, there's a one moment where Laura Dern doesn't raise the, her eyes for 
quite a few seconds. For me, it was like they were completely detaching themselves from the script. Obviously, I didn't read the script, but it it felt so true, so deep. What is it like for you as a director to see them um, carry on with their inner feelings in a way and to see them bring that to their characters on screen? It was um, a real joy. And it's true that, for example, the restaurant scene for me was very special. What she does here, Laura, in my opinion, is really impressive. It's like you, it, it was about, you know, it was not an easy scene, meaning that it's like almost like an eight minute scene. So it's very long. There is nothing almost going on. They are just sitting in front of each other's could be very boring. And we have to find a way to make it cinematic. And the only way to make it cinematic was not to try to do something specific with the camera to, you know, to like a gimmick. It was about trying to be as truthful as possible and to, in a way to, to feel and to see the, the story that they share for 20 years just behind the words, you know, and to, to, to feel everything about who they were, what happened between the two of them. And it could happen only behind the words and in silence. So it means that when you have a great actress like Laura Dern, it could happen, you know, meaning that on a face, you can feel and see everything, um, even though she has the words to say what she has to say at that moment. It was really, really uh, profound to me to, to witness this. And sometimes it's more like a strategy, a, a, a strategy, sorry. Meaning that to, to, to direct actors, it's about, you know, caring for them, loving them, looking at them, but it's also sometimes using strategies. And uh, mm -hmm. one of them, for example, was when there is like a, a gunshot at some point in the film, and I didn't want to, them to, to fake that moment. So what I said to them is that it would be just a, a rehearsal for the camera, you know. I was really prepared because I took some time with, uh, with the, the cameraman to, to, to make sure we knew exactly what movement we were, we were going to do with the camera. And so I told them, okay, so let's do the scene. There will be no gunshot at the end of the scene. It's just for technical reason, but just do the lines. And so they were in that situation without knowing that it was going to happen. But I knew that I would I would give the top. So when the gunshot happened, they had to deal with that situation that was not planning. So the, the surprise, but also the terror you can feel and see on their face are real terror. And they have to deal with it, meaning they made a decision to stand and to run out of frame. And it's, I mean, this was the kind of truth that I was trying to reach when yeah. you are in between always uh, navigating between rehearsing and shooting truth and performance, real life and storytelling. And when is everything is mixed in order to try to reach that moment when you can catch a real terror, you know? So for that scene in particular, we did only one take because as soon as it was done, I knew that it was exactly what I was looking for and we moved on to something else, you know? Wow, that's so impressive. I've, I've got chills just listening to it because I'm, I'm re-watching the scene in my head. It's incredible. And the restaurant scene, actually, I watched a lot of uh, interviews with this, the cast of The Sun, and the, the restaurant scene comes up a lot. It, it really brought them to a place acting-wise. It feels like they kind of never or rarely experienced that kind of... Um, the, what they searched in themselves, you know? Yeah, I mean, this is what we tried to do, and I was looking at to have actors that was that were ready to do that and available psychologically artistically uh, available to to do that and it takes a lot of courage to be honest to do that and not only in that scene but the whole project was like that you know it was like invited to be themselves and to deal with that and i'm really grateful you know for example i mean i feel like every person involved in this film knew why he or she wanted to make that film, you know. Um, they, they had a personal connection to that topic all the time. And for example, Laura Dern, I remember she was supposed to do another film. It was a big film. And uh, we struggled with the schedule. And at some point I understood that, you know, there was a real conflict. And I was expecting her to let me down, you know, because it was a much bigger film, a much bigger film. And in the end, she made a decision to, to do The Sun for these reasons, you know, she's not only this great actress, she's also a mother and uh, she has teenagers. And oh. I think that she felt the necessity to explore these emotions and to share this story because, you know, 
especially after COVID, you know, uh, there is like, a, we are going through such a mental health crisis at the moment. There are so many people in pain that are not helped. And mm -hmm. um, in a way, that film was trying to provoke some reactions uh, about this topic. Wow, that's very impressive. And I see the role of Laura in Hugh Jackman as portraying the question, what is the cause? What is Why is this happening? Is it our fault? And I see the character of Vanessa Kirby as the question, well, it's here now. So what do we do? How do we fix it? Do you think it's a correct interpretation? Do you think it's right to see it that way? Yes, but I think that to ask questions like, is it my fault, never leads to a good solution. You know, for example, if one of your friends told you that he got cancer or something like that, you wouldn't feel bad about not knowing how to deal with it. You would say, I'm here for you, but you, do, you wouldn't feel like you have to, to know how to fix it yourself, you know? But strangely, when it comes to mental health issue, you feel like you, you started the process of, I am responsible for that. What did I do wrong? Uh, is it my fault? I'm, I am guilty. And it's the worst way to help someone somehow. If we could see mental health issue as we know how to see physical issues, I mean, we would be able to help others, I would say. And because that story, it's a lot about how guilt makes us blind in a way. And uh, yes, I think that it, it would make no sense to blame anyone for having, you know, a stomach issue or a heart issue yeah. and I think we should learn to, 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 to see mental health issue the way we do see physical issues mm -hmm. and not to blame anyone and, and to be aware that it's a lot of pain and just to, to try to help with humility and to accept that we are not equipped sometimes to help and that's okay and yeah. it requires to, to ask for help from people who knows how, what to do and how to do it. Yeah, it, I, absolutely. I completely agree with that. The fact that the son is also based on on your play, of course, that you did when you did it in Paris. I know you said before that people came up to you at the end of the play to just share their personal experience. Um, have you ever found yourself taking some of these comments and testimonies into consideration or drew inspiration? from these testimonies and did it impact you in the way that you transcribe the play into a film? Yes, but not because of these comments, you know, the comments gave me the conviction that, you know, so many people are in this position. And that it was right moment to tell that story, yeah. Yeah, it's more that. And then you have to try to catch, you know, uh, to adapt it in a way that it is real. <laughs> and that people would uh, buy the reality of it. And it's, it was a difficult one because they re, there, there is no, so much denial around these topics. And there is also a denial that there is a denial, meaning that we are talking all the time about mental health issues. And we feel like, oh, we are talking about it. And I really feel that we are not comfortable talking about it. We are not comfortable facing the pain itself. And, and and this is what I was trying to do, to do like a very straightforward story without shying away what it is. And also the fact that there is no explanation, there is no simple explanation. It's like a mystery, like a black hole. And it's raw and it's incompatible. And, and, and so, yes, I, I, it was a way to, to challenge the denial, I would say. Obviously, seeing Anthony Hopkins back in the role, not as the father, but as a father, um, was <laughs> incredible, of course. But so do you just call him now, uh, asking to go on set, and he's like, of course, give me five minutes? Yeah, no, it's, you know, I come from theater, and I love the, this idea of a troupe, you know, like yeah. you have a family, and, and it's, uh, it's very, very uh, profound. And also making a film, you know, it's a very emotional uh, journey, and we we went through this together with Anthony. So we are very, very close. And actually, to be honest, he's the very, very first one to read, who read, read the script. When I, when I stopped, this, uh, finished the script, I just sent it to him. And, and I really wanted him to be part of it for emotional reasons, but also because uh, I knew that what was written for him in mind, this scene would become, would become, became, sorry, um, like a pivotal scene uh, in the film. 
You know, it's called the sun, but it's it's told from the, the, the father's perspective, from Hugh Jackman's perspective. And we understand at some point that he's also a son, you know, and he's, he's probably the son in, in the story. He's a son in pain. He's a son that like, was, he's still trying to deal with his brutal father. And, mm -hmm. uh, and in a way, we are all like that, you know, we are all daughters and sons forever. And we have to deal with that and uh, making decision to do better than our parents or to do differently than our parents. And this is what this character is going through, trying to to be the father he never had or to be a better father than the one he had. And probably that's the reason why he's not capable to deal with his present is because he's completely taken by his own past. And so it was a way through Anthony to, you know, to explore this dimension of uh, trauma, you know, that you can pass on generations and how to break the circle and how not to break the circle sometimes. Exactly. And, uh, I mean, it's just so great because you've got Anthony Hopkins. He's always in. He's like, he gets your script. He's like, of course, count me in. And then Hugh Jackman, I think, sent you a letter to uh, be a part of that project. I mean, can you be any cooler? No, that's, I was, uh, I was really, really uh, happy with that letter uh, from Hugh Jackman because yeah. I was not expecting that, of course. He's the one who was tell told me I should do that film. And I really love that, you know, the fact when you're capable to express your desire, I think that's the best way to start the process. I'm, right. I'm saying that because a lot of people are I'm like shy about their own desires as if it was like not good to express what you have in your heart. And I, I really feel the opposite, meaning that every time someone is not pushy, but just honest, I mean, I feel attracted by that because it's the best way to start something important, I would say, when you really want something. It makes me feel willing something from someone else, you know? And I love that uh, very much. And um, no, I, I feel very grateful for these uh, commitments. Yeah, of course. And Hans Zimmer score, genius Hans Zimmer. How yeah. did that collaboration come to life? And how did you know it had to be him? Because in in a film, the music of a film tells the story just as much as the characters in the script. Yeah, it, it comes from childhood, I would say, you know? I, I, I really like him very, very much. And for example, for me, Interstellar. Interstellar is a masterpiece. Yeah. And, um, I don't know. I had this desire to work with him. Yeah. I contacted him and he said yes right away. So I was very happy. We met in London. And then I came to Los Angeles to work with him. And then he was in, in Europe, in Berlin, rehearsing his tour. So I went to Berlin in his uh, hotel room to work with him. And then we went to London to record the music. So it was like a a voyage it was like a long journey all together and i really love doing that with him um he has such a specific sound i would say and um yeah it's uh it, i understand that it's probably one of the most exciting work to be a composer for film i think it's it's really really extraordinary but it's difficult you know to that moment when the film has to meet uh the music it's 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 a challenging meeting you know it's not easy sometimes it could be like a miracle you know i heard that godard said that you know once he received the uh, georges de Rue's music for contempt and it just had to put the music on it and it was done sometimes it works like that but in my experience and also because music is so important to me it's like a lot of conversations and a lot of work and mm -hmm. uh, and until the last last minute you feel like it's not going to to meet, yeah. to work. And and so it's, it, it's, I think it's almost the most difficult part of making a film. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I mean, Hans Zimmer, Hugh Jackman, Laura Dern, Vanessa Kirby, and Florian Zeller, that is absolutely incredible. What's next, Florian? Is it, do you already have an idea or have you started working on The Mother or The Truth or, you know, I could name all of your plays, really? No, to be honest, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what I want to do. Uh, I'm I'm thinking a lot about it, but I'm still a bit with the sun, and I know that now I need to let it uh, live its own life, you know, as you have to do with your own children, and uh, and then it will give me some room to think about what next. But I don't know. I really don't know. Thank you so much, Florian. I have to say, I think first time I really uh, I came across your writing was with um, I think the 
you know, the tranquility. I think it's uh, uh, otherwise engaged, you know, the title in, uh, oh, yes, in yes, the, yes. something like that. And I, I just thought the writing was so subtle. And so it, it, you said so much. It, it, it was incredible. And then when I saw you, your name attached to the father in the, well, to the film, and I was like, wow, that is so great. Thank you so much, Mel, for being so kind. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much. Merci, Florian. Thank you for yes, taking. Félicitations. Double, triple, félicitations pour tout. Merci beaucoup.